Your conference is being recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Vidya, moderator for the conference call. Welcome to Titagar Rail Systems Limited Q4 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Umesh Chaudhary, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Pritish Chaudhary, Director Marketing and Business Development, Mr. Anil Agarwal, Director Finance, CFO and CBRO, Mr. Saurav Singhania, Joint CFO and Group Finance Controller. As a reminder, all participants will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need any assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Mohit Kumar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vidya. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to welcome you all for the Q4 FY23 and a 523 earnings call for T Tower Wagons Limited. Without much delay, I would now like to hand over the call to the management for the opening remarks, which will be followed by Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon to everybody. And uh, uh, once again, our, our own welcome, uh, heartiest welcome to the uh, Q4 and uh, 23 earnings uh, conference call. Uh, as always, it's a great pleasure uh, interacting uh, with all of you. Uh, so uh, just to give you a brief snapshot of the quarter gone by and the year gone by, and then, uh, of course, uh, very happy to take questions and answer them uh, to the best possible extent. Uh, I think uh, FI23 has been a significant uh, year for uh, in the history of uh, our company. It's uh, the beginning of the second uh, 25 years of the company. The first uh, we completed 25 years in July 22, and uh, it's been a significant uh, uh, way to kind of celebrate the, the quarter uh, anniversary or the silver anniversary because. Uh, we, the company has moved from being a, uh, just a wagon manufacturer to being a rail systems uh, manufacturer, and that is significant from the change of the name also that has been uh, implemented. So, Petagar Wagon now is uh, called Petagar Rail Systems, and that is reflective of the strategy that uh, we would follow for the company in the future. Uh, we have also decided uh, in the last quarter to uh, to, uh, to, seg uh, to segmentize the company into two business segments, the passenger uh, rail systems business and the freight rail systems business. We have decided to merge the smaller businesses like the shipbuilding, etc., into the freight because they are quite insignificant in terms of uh, the overall size uh, and the potential that we have now. Uh, that doesn't mean that we are... Uh, uh, foregoing those business opportunities, but definitely we are uh, uh, focusing on the existing opportunities that we have and uh, keeping them in a, in a slow burner so that we can uh, raise the flame there once uh, we have been able to stabilize our core businesses, which is the freight rail systems and the passenger rail systems. Uh, the other significant developments uh, in the company have been uh, that uh, we have uh, kind of uh, gone through a transformational journey in terms of the size of uh, business that we have. Uh, you'd be uh, happy to know that uh, when we uh, declared our results for FI22, we were with an order book of uh, just about 1,600 crores, which uh, along with our share of the consortium uh, that uh, orders that we have run in a consortium with BHEL and Ramakrishna Forging, our uh, business goes up to almost uh, 27, order book goes up to almost 27,000 plus crores. So that's a quantum uh, jump uh, that we have been able to make during the year. In terms of performance also, we have continuously ramped up uh, the performance quarter after quarter reaching to uh, 970-odd crores in the last quarter. 
and the total year revenue of 2781 crore uh, which of course the quarter and the year are the best ever in the history of the company uh, we believe going forward uh, the passenger rail, railing, uh, rail system which was just about uh, 500 crores out of this 2700 crores has a long uh, headroom available uh, we are currently operating at about uh, five, six coaches per month. We have delivered 17 trains by March uh, 23. And uh, we would be ramping it up in the beginning to 20 cars per month. And then our capacity planned for the passenger coaches over the next two to three years is to go up to 70 coaches, uh, 70, 75 coaches per month. That's about 750, 800 coaches uh, plus in a year. Uh, in terms of the freight wagons, uh, we are now around the run rate of 700 wagons, uh, between 650, 700, and we intend within this financial year to take it up to 1,000 wagons a year. Uh, the other very significant developments that have taken place during the quarter, uh, during the year is, of course, our entry into the Vande Bharat train segment, where we uh, won the contract from the Indian Railways for manufacturing 80 Vande Bharat trains in consortium with BHEL. Uh, as everybody knows, BHEL is a, a leader in uh, electrical and propulsion, and that is what their scope in the consortium would be. And uh, our scope would be to manufacture the train. The prototype train will be made in the next 24 months. And thereafter, in about four, four and a half years, the balance train will be delivered, which is followed by a 35-year maintenance contract. Uh, although the pricing has been a, a challenge because of competitive pressures, but uh, we had factored in some part of it, uh, and we believe that we will still be able to uh, maintain the overall average blended uh, EBITDA margins that we are doing now, which is about 8 to 10 percent uh, in this contract, in the supply portion also. Uh, the services portion may be, uh, the AMC portion may be a little better, but uh, even in the supply, we should be able to achieve the 8 to 10 percent uh, data margin. The other significant uh, contract that the company has won is for manufacturing of wheels. And as is well known uh, to uh, most of you, uh, and I think uh, this has been one of the questions that uh, has been asked in most of the investor calls is, how do you manage your uh, supply of wheel sets because that's been always in short supply. So I think, uh, you know, a country like India, which has uh, achieved many, uh, uh, many a scientific feat, uh, has uh, still been de dependent on uh, foreign countries like China, Ukraine, etc., for availability of wheels. And uh, kudos to the government uh, of India and to the railway ministry for coming up with this very forward-looking concept of having a 20-year uptake agreement for uh, buying 80,000 wheels per annum, which has enabled us to come uh, in uh, partnership with Ramakrishna Forging, which is uh, undoubtedly a market leader in the forging business, and they have uh, uh, a wealth of uh, domain expertise in terms of the forging uh, process. Uh, combined with our domain expertise in the railway, it becomes a very strong win-win uh, association between the two companies. And we would be setting up uh, together a plant uh, to produce almost 200,000 wheels per annum. This would probably, I'm not sure exactly, but probably be one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, wheel manufacturing plant outside China, post wheel manufacturing plant outside China. Uh, so. Out of that 200,000, 80,000 wheels are assured for the next 20 years by the Indian Railways, and the rest will be used for our own wagons, for exports, for Vande Bharat, etc. So uh, these are uh, a few very important developments that have happened uh, in the course of the last year. Uh, another important, uh, very significant and important development that has happened is in the erstwhile subsidiary that we had in Italy, that is Titagar Kirema, wherein uh, yeah, investment uh, was uh, infused by new investors, including the government of Italy, in September 2022, as a result of which uh, Titagar Kirema got converted from a subsidiary to an associate company. Uh, 
uh, in terms of the operations of the associate company, uh, the, the headwinds uh, have been very strong in Europe, as uh, most of you know. Uh, to start with was the COVID crisis, then was the inflation, uh, Ukraine war related uh, inflationary crisis, and so on and so forth. Uh, however, having said that, uh, the company has been or as in the, as it, and is in the process of getting some very significant orders. And with the, uh, with the induction of uh, the government of Italy as an equity partner, we do believe that the company has a, a strong prospect. The turnaround of the company has been delayed, uh, which we were expecting to happen last year, uh, FY23. Uh, we've not been able to uh, uh, turn positive in FY23, but uh, we do estimate based on the current order books to be able to break even, uh, at least on the EBITDA positive level uh, in FY24. Uh, we've been able to uh, install a new management, uh, the, which uh, both the uh, uh, induction of the government of Italy as a shareholder, the board had to be reconstituted, the management has been installed with their consent, and we believe that the company is uh, now on its way to recovery. So as far as uh, the future outlook for India is concerned, uh, uh, the outlook uh, on the back of the very strong uh, government policies for Atmanirbhar Bharat, for Make in India, and the infrastructure, and I was, read, I was hearing an uh, interview of uh, the Honorable uh, Railway Minister a few days ago, where he was explaining the economics of uh, investment in the railway infrastructure and the payback uh, to the economy. So this is the first time that uh, it's a music to ears that uh, at such senior levels, such uh, detailed and careful analysis of the return on investment in such infrastructure, particularly in respect to the railways, is being done. And that makes us even more confident that this uh, story of uh, uh, the railways uh, turning around and companies like us being able to ride that wave effectively uh, is, uh, is something that is likely to continue. So with these uh, uh, opening uh, remarks, uh, uh, I'll be uh, I'll hand over uh, the call to Mr. Anil Agarwal and Mr. Saurabh Singhania to maybe walk you through some of the uh, highlights of the financial and uh, then most happy to take uh, any questions that may be. Thank you. So, this is all. so uh, just few key, key numbers that I would put. Hello. So just a few key numbers that I wanted to highlight uh, in terms of the performance of the quarter. So uh, in terms of the revenue, we, are, we had 974 crores during the current quarter as against 422 crores in the corresponding quarter in March 2022, which is 131% increase. Uh, EBITDA has gone up by 114% as compared to March 22 and profit before tax by 173%. In terms of the overall revenue from year-on-year -year basis, this is 86% increase as compared to last year, 57% in EBITDA, and 85% in profit before tax. Some key uh, ratios, if you see, uh, in terms of return on capital employed, we were at 6.5% in FY19, which is in our presentation page number 13, and now we have gone up to 26% in FY23. The return on equity has gone up uh, from 5.2% in FY19 to 16.3% in FY23. In terms of net working capital days, uh, we were at peak in FY21 at 80 days, which has now gone down to 60 days as on FY23. So in terms of uh, uh, the uh, overall uh, uh, year, in terms of the overall uh, uh, segmental performance, if you see, uh, in the current year, we were at, uh, from the trade rolling stock segment, uh, the total uh, revenue was at 2,250 crores, and uh, the revenue from the division has been at uh, 528 crores. The margin from the trade rolling stock segment was at 10.47%, and the margin from the passenger rolling stock was at 4.16%. So with this, uh, I would uh, open up the questions uh, for, from the uh, 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 participants in the call. Thank you. Thank you, Sadar.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and one again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. The first question comes from Kaushik Mohan from Ashika Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers. Sir, I have a uh, couple of questions. Can you uh, just uh, give some light on uh, one day Bharat for us? We have 80 trains order. What is the total value of this order and how much is your share? How much is your share? And uh, in your share, how much is for construction and how much is for uh, maintenance? Thank you very much, Ms. Mohan. Uh, so for the Vande Bharat uh, contract, uh, there are two portions to the contract, the supply portion and the maintenance. Uh, the contract value is about 9,600 crores. And uh, the and plus PVC which will accumulate over the period of time, and the maintenance is about 1.4, 1.5 times of that. So the total contract value, including maintenance, is about 24,000 crores, uh, plus the PVC as I said. Uh, our share on the overall basis is about 51, 52 percent, and BHL is the rest. 48 52 and 48 percentage is BHL. Right? Between 51 and 52 percent. So uh, it's around 51, 52 percent is for us and balance is for BHL. This is applicable both for the supply as well as the service. Got it, sir. And my second question is on the, uh, uh, the RK forging part. Uh, sir, uh, with RK forging, what is your share between both of us and what is the total order value? And uh, how many years will this go for? So the uh, uh, initial contract value which we have received is for 15,60,000 wheels which has to be supplied over 20 years. The value of the contract is close to 13,000 crores and uh, participation of both the companies is almost equal. So, sir, is this inflation adjusted or uh, uh, is the number has been exactly calculated current price? So it is, this is not inflation adjusted, this is plus PVC. Okay, okay. Uh, sir, and okay. Exact, uh, exact quantity is 15,40,000, yeah? 15,40,000, I'm sorry, not 15,60. 15,40,000 wheels, and the total exact value is closing to, 30, closing to uh, approximately 30,000. Got it. Uh, sir, there is one recent uh, bidding which happened for 50,000 wagons. Uh, when can we expect the results for this? So there is no bidding that has happened till now. Uh, it was in the media that there is a tender likely to come out, but the tender has not yet come out. Yes, uh, Thanks for and congratulations to the number. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Sunil Ji, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, first of all, my uh, my first question is regarding this, uh, the decrease in the borrowing. This, if I consider the, this current and uh, non-current borrowing, so it's about approximately 16 crore rupees, which is fantastic. But uh, there is an increase of 200 crore rupees in the contract borrowing. Uh, sorry, yeah, in the contract purchase. What does it mean? Does it also feel some interest? Or is it purely uh, like vendor character? Sorry, sir, are you talking about the contract liabilities on the standalone yes. financial yes. yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah, so these contract liabilities are being advanced from customers that has been received against various contracts. So this has been disclosed separately in line with the requirements of the schedule. So and basically, if you can use, so if you can use the term made advanced from received from customers, this will be much better because it's too confusing and too misleading about this is contract liabilities. It can, yeah, contract, can contract can include so many things. Contract can, contract can include about vendors, about containers, so many things it can include. Yeah, it can include. So better to everybody write advance receipt from customer soul. We take your suggestion, sir. Very valuable. We will examine this according to the accounting standards. And I have requested my team to examine. I think it's a very valuable suggestion. Yeah, and number two, I mean, I have seen all your press release. 
there is also some sort of uh, incompleteness and a misleading portion is there because you are writing okay 80 bande what 10 we have received uh, order yeah in consortium with dell but there is no mentioning that what is your share of the jb or the consortium in that particular press release so we as an investor just like we we just keep uh, thinking okay maybe it's 90% maybe it's 10% maybe 20% maybe 50% so today you only clarify so going uh, so going forward whenever any press release are given kindly mention like any other company mention to give the complete information otherwise it may also tend amount to like you know this uh, like it can say violation of this required uh, uh, loader for example uh, I, again thank you for your suggestion but to the best of our uh, knowledge uh, the press releases that have been issued by us and we cannot talk about press coverages but press releases we always give all the necessary facts that are to be given if there are some uh, that you have come across which do not give the necessary uh, details we would request you to share this with our investor team and we should certainly look into it but as a company we are very conscious about press releases of course we cannot control all press coverages uh, because uh, no no sir they are so so sir i'm not talking about press release i'm talking about the corporate announcement which you are given to the stock exchange we did only that uh, only that one like uh, like we don't lie on this media or the paper so whatever corporate announcement you have given in the form of press release to show a change there only we are uh, we have seen that nowhere you have mentioned or your team has mentioned regarding that what is the share of titagar vegan or titagar rail system in the particular jb or consortium so going forward kindly mention this so so that it is a complete thank you thank you very much you will shall definitely check this up and if there is uh, uh, inadequacy of information we shall definitely make sure that it is correct thank you so nice so nice so nice thank you thank you thank you sir the next question comes from bala subramanian from aryan capital please go ahead good evening sir congratulations for good setup numbers my first question is like uh, what would be the status for trial in propulsion systems for railways and after the propulsion systems uh, 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 like is a kind of indigenization so what kind of margin improvement do we may expect because right now in the metro uh, uh, in the car side around 20 to 30 percent of uh, value comes from propulsion systems only so after this indigenization uh, what kind of uh, uh, margin improvement we may expect thank you sir uh... the in terms of the process of approval of the propulsion system that is under way uh, some of the components we have already supplied and they are under the trial period uh, there is a uh, very detailed step by step approval process for the propulsion system which is actually quite time taking uh, we are pursuing that and over this year we should be able to receive some of the approvals and uh, start bulk supply some of the approvals will get filled over to the next year so overall uh, i would say we are uh, by and large as per our plan on the propulsion system uh, and uh, in terms of your second part of your question uh, that about margin improvements once we have our own propulsion system definitely it is going to impact uh, the margins favorably once we start making our own indigenous propulsion system but uh, in order to reach that stage where we will be fully independent and uh, we'll be able to do our own propulsion systems entirely by ourselves it is going to be a process of at least 2 to 3 years so thereafter there is uh, definitely going to be uh, uh, a quantum jump uh, in the overall margins of the prs that is the passenger uh, rail system business uh, having said that uh, i would also like to clarify that uh, the passenger rail system even without the propulsion is a, a business where we are expecting to get uh, the same 8 to 10% ebitda margins the current low level of ebitda is on account of uh, the low top line and our business the top line is what drives the bottom line so since the business is at a nascent stage till the business uh, comes to a certain uh, uh, base level Uh, the EBITDA margins are lower, but you have you would see that in uh, it has improved over the quarters. And uh, going forward, uh, uh, once we have been able to reach a certain base level, we would be able to get to the 8-10 percent EBITDA margin on the PRS also. Okay, got it, sir. Answer my second question on the traction motor side. Uh, uh, what would be the volume on that uh, monthly run rate, and uh, what kind of target we have going forward? 
So the capacity that we have uh, uh, installed capacity is between 150 to 200 traction motors per year. That's 1800 to 2400 traction motors per year. Uh, but as I mentioned a little while ago, the entire process of approval is a time-taking one. Uh, we have already supplied traction motors. Some of them have already undergone trial. The trials have been successful, and it is uh, uh, it is a process which is ongoing. And uh, we will continue to uh, travel this journey. Okay, so we are manufacturing on 50 to 60 motors per month, or like uh, what would be the numbers? No, now we are not. Uh, as I mentioned, that we have only made the trial production. The trials have to go on, and there's a process. I mean, I will not be able to uh, elaborate the entire process because it's the entire uh, specifications of the railways. But, uh, there, you know, to be able to get to the rated capacity of 150 to 200 traction motors a month is going to be a two, two and a half year journey. Okay, got it, sir. Sir, on the metro side, uh, is there any pit pipeline? And what would be the status on Surat and Ahmedabad metros? If you could throw some lights on future opportunities, that would be really helpful. The metro business is a very uh, attractive business. There are many metros that are coming up and that have been announced to come up. I would not be able to speak about specific opportunities as we can only speak about them if and when we are successful in winning a bid. But uh, all I can say is that, uh, you know, being the latest entrant in this field uh, and competing with large companies, we have been able to establish ourselves in a very significant manner as the only Indian uh, fully Atmanirbhar uh, metro coach manufacturer and uh, using this uh, advantage of being established as a good manufacturer of metro coaches, we will definitely uh, be a significant, significant player in this segment in years to come. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I'll come back in here. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Vinay Chaudhary, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the great numbers. Uh, so on the wagons, uh, uh, how much would be the private sector wagons which have been produced in, say, FY23? And what are the planned production for uh, the coming FY24? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, as a strap between the private sector and the RSP wagons, uh, we do not uh, announce those numbers. All I can say is that uh, we are uh, a leader in both the segments. Uh, we have order books which are probably uh, equal to the largest or even the largest in uh, the uh, private sector wagon market also. And of course, we are by far the leaders in uh, the railway uh, wagon market. So, uh, in bo both the segments, we are uh, quite actively uh, present and uh, are playing a, a very important, uh, significant role. Sure. And uh, what would be uh, like the uh, manufacturing? When can we expect the uh, coaches uh, manufactured for CRRC? Uh, start. Uh, the coaches are for uh, Bangalore Metro uh, on behalf of CRRC, and the production is likely to start in the Q3 of the current uh, financial year. Okay, okay. And uh, if I got the uh, uh, information right, the current capacity for Metro coaches is uh, around uh, 1.5 to 2 uh, lakhs. Uh, I, I did not get you. I'm uh, sorry. So, so uh, can you uh, uh, throw some light on the current capacity for the metro coaches? Uh, uh, you know, with the commencement of the stainless steel coaches uh, set to begin production. Okay. So, so for the metro, we will have a capacity of about 30, 35 coaches per per bus, and then we would have similar capacity for the Vande Bharat. So overall, we are planning to build a capacity of about 70 cars per month. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Premal Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. 
Uh, what was the wagon production for this current quarter? Total wagon production? Hello? Uh, audible? Yeah, you're very much audible. Good afternoon, sir. So, uh, we have been able to uh, get to approximately uh, an average uh, run rate of around 8,000 wagons. That's about 2,000 wagons in a quarter. But we would not be able to disclose the exact numbers as we don't uh, we not put that in our presentation and we do not generally disclose the exact numbers. But we are now, uh, in the, I mean, uh, we have been able to achieve close to 2,000 wagons uh, per quarter and uh, our target is in the uh, current financial year to go it further to reach uh, close to 3,000 wagons per quarter. Okay, thank you. And uh, so in this quarter's uh, results, the freight rail system shows a top line of about 808 crores, and uh, you've already merged the shipping uh, business into that. So could we get a uh, basic idea about what is the uh, uh, freight rail uh, top line and a shipping top line, because both are included, so we don't have an idea on that. So it is primarily the freight rail, shipping being not a very significant part. That is why the segments have been merged. So uh, to subdivide the merge segments at this point uh, may not be possible or appropriate, but uh, uh, you know, in the overall uh, size of the company and overall scheme of things, uh, it would be extremely small. The ship building would be extremely small at this point of time. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening comment, uh, that is true for this for, uh, at this point of time. And uh, by no means uh, we are uh, planning to uh, kind of downplay the ship building uh, for the long term. We believe that it does offer a good prospect. Uh, but uh, for uh, being able to concentrate both our capital allocation and management uh, resource and time allocation, uh, this uh, reorganization has been uh, considered appropriate and implemented. Okay. And this Pune Metro, what, what, uh, what percentage of the total contract is still pending to be executed and by when will it be complete? As I mentioned, uh, uh, about 50% of the contract has been completed in the last year, the last financial year. The balance will be completed within the current year. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Ankur Agarwal from RC Well Solutions Private Limited. Please go ahead. Okay, so I have a lot of questions. 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 I जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जहां तक पैसेंजर रेल बिजनेस का सवाल है जैसा कि हमने कहा कि हमारी जो कैपेसिटी हम बिल्ड करने जा रहे हैं वो लगभग 700 से 800 कोचेस सालाना बनाने की हमारी कैपेसिटी रहेगी और अगर हम लगभग एक कोच के और ये मैं सिर्फ कैपेसिटी के अनुसार बता रहा हूं अगर एक कोच की हम सेलिंग प्राइस कंसीडर करें तो करीब लगभग 9 से 10 करोड़ की सेलिंग प्राइस होती है वंदे भारत में क्योंकि कंसोर्शियम है तो हमारी सेलिंग प्राइस थोड़ी कम हो जाएगी बट एवरेज में अगर हम देखें तो ये एक अपॉर्चुनिटी बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है और अकेली पैसेंजर रोलिंग स्टॉक और पैसेंजर रेल सिस्टम की जो अपॉर्चुनिटी है हमारे आज के पूरे कंपनी के साइज से बहुत बड़ी अपॉर्चुनिटी है जो मेट्रोस की कैपेसिटी हम बिल्ड कर रहे हैं वो करीब 30 गाड़ियों की कर रहे हैं और वंदे भारत की जो कर रहे हैं वो भी 30 35 गाड़ियों की कर रहे हैं मैंने की ये ये जो मार्च क्वार्टर में कितना पैसेंजर कोचिंग हमने डिलीवर करा है जी अभी अभी तो इट इज अ वेरी नेसेंट स्टेट अभी हम वो पांच छह गाड़ियां तक गाड़ी कोचेस तक ही पहुंच पाए हैं बट अब हम उसको रैंप अप कर रहे हैं और जल्दी हम उसे 12 15 कोच तक ले जाएंगे और उसके बाद बढ़ा के 20 तक ले जाएंगे ये मैं मेट्रो की बात कर रहा हूं और मेट्रो में हमारी फाइनल जो कैपेसिटी टारगेट है वो 30 कोच की है पर मंथ जी 30 कोच पर मंथ की है और वंदे भारत की जो लाइन है वो अगले 2 सालों में हमारी पूरी चालू हो जाएगी जिसमें इनिशियली जो प्रोडक्शन है वो कम होगा लेकिन जो कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअल डिलीवरीज है उसके अनुसार हमें 30 35 कोच महीने की बनानी पड़ेगी प्रोडक्शन के चालू होने के दो साल के अंदर 
ये इटली का जो हमारा एसोसिएट हो गया है इसकी ऑर्डर बुक पोजिशन क्या है सर इटली में जो लास्ट हमने अनाउंस किया था उस समय करीब आधे हाफ मिलियन फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी फिफ्ट टू फाइव हंड्रेड मिलियन यूरो की ऑर्डर बुक थी और वहां पे लेकिन कई ऑर्डर पाइपलाइन में भी उन्होंने बिड किए हैं और वो अप्रोप्रिएट समय पे अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिस्क्लोजर नॉर्म्स हम जरूर डिस्क्लोज करेंगे ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर The next question comes from Karthikeyan from Priyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, I, uh, so, couple of things, sir. On these two contracts, one in consortium with RK Forging and the other with BHEL, uh, given the long tenures of these contracts, uh, uh, and and specifically on the RK project, where you are also creating extra capacity. Couple of things. Can you tell us uh, how protected are you in terms of downsides on the profitability side in these in these contracts? And B, uh, given that you are creating 60% of extra capacity, spare capacity on the wheel set side, how soon do you believe you'll be able to absorb this entire capacity? Sir? Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of the uh, downside protection, you see there are two ways of downside protection. One is the price protection for the contract on account of inflationary tendencies, the trend. Uh, so uh, all the contracts, the large contracts that we have got, uh, whether it is Vande Bharat or the wheels, are both with price variation, uh, adequate price variation clause, which kind of protects. Uh, Uh, the uh, companies, uh, whether it's our consortium with BHEL or our consortium with uh, uh, Ramakrishna Forging, from yeah. the inflationary trend. In terms of the, uh, 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 I'm very sorry to be interrupting, but when you say inflation, would that be only on the input side, or would that include fuel and other components as well? Sir? It is a, it is a very uh, comprehensive uh, price variation uh, formula. I mean, of course, I can. Would not be able to go into each element of that, but when the price variation formulas are worked out, they are worked yeah. out on the basis of the actual cost of production. So, uh, suffice to say that uh, based on the experience of the company over the last 25 years, which is a very long period of time to be able to judge the efficacy of such price variation clauses, uh, barring uh, a couple of quarters here or there. Uh, where the price movements could be very steep and sudden, uh, the price variation clause does compensate for the inflationary uh, uh, cost pressures. Right. Uh, right. In terms of utilization of the capacity is concerned, uh, you know, if, if any venture is set up where 40% uh, capacity is underwritten by a single customer for a long period of 20 years. that in itself uh, gives you a very large uh, huge head start so uh, that is what we are looking at we are looking at the glass half full and not the glass half empty the 60% capacity that we are building up is something which will uh, be uh, not a big challenge to uh, to kind of uh, absorb or to be able to sell as we ourselves as a wagon manufacturer are always in shortage of wheel sets uh, then after that we would also have the vande bharat and then the maintenance of the vande bharat so there are 35 years of maintenance of the vande bharat which would also require wheel sets and then there is the export market you know wheels are uh, you know with the china plus one strategy which the world is following today most of the wheels are being produced in china so we do believe that there is a, a very good uh, export potential and we would be focusing uh, on export markets as well for the wheels that we will produce right uh, the one uh, clarification sir would there be a, a meaningful import content uh, in terms of raw materials it is still available locally for the wheel sets or would you have a specific uh, grade requirements which you have to import at this point in time wheel is available locally but i am not able to give details about the the uh, kind of import versus domestic content there is the, the tenders are under make in india uh, clause of the government which means substantial local content is a must but uh, having said that uh, you know uh, these are uh, operational decisions and we are talking about a contract which lasts for 20 years 
sure. so you know, obviously there are uh, uh, the strategies cannot be kind of decided at have an issue or off camp right but but there is no restrict uh, there is no constraint in terms of local availability my question you know i i get that you you retain the option of course uh, and uh, one last question if i may sir uh, don't mind my delivering the point uh, but the uh, with just the 40% utilization 77000 per annum effectively the wheel set would you at least break even at an ebitda level uh, with just this this number that is to say uh it would be going into too much of financial details we will uh, we will definitely uh, uh, you know disclose uh, because this is a consortium of two listed company uh, whatever is possible to be disclosed but once again i would say that uh, 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 as investors you would have seen many companies and uh, as industrialists uh, whatever little we have seen if a business is started a green field project is started wherein 40% of the capacity is underwritten for the next 20 years by a single customer then the head start uh, it's like starting at a 50 meter uh, or a 40 meter uh, uh, kind of handicap advantage in a 100 meter race of course of course so i i appreciate uh, the uh, the advantage of course that just clarifying whether you know uh, there is a longer gestation than uh, what is available you know immediately that is the only point we had to question but uh, thanks very much for uh, indulging me and very best wishes sir thank you thank you sir we have a follow up question from kaushik mohan from ashika stock broking please go ahead uh hi sir uh, this is a uh, question on uh, i just wanted to understand on your uh, current uh, pune orders so how many total what is the contract value for pune and how much uh, you told 50% is been delivered that means another 50% how long you have the time So the total contract for Pune was 34 trains. Uh, the value of the contract was about 1,100 crores. 50% has been executed. The balance will be over within this right here. Uh, so per one train, how many uh, coaches uh, uh, that comes out to be? Three. So 34 trains is three coaches each. Under ten two coaches. Under ten two coaches. So that means that uh, half of that is 51. You have been already supplied, and 51 is still more pending. That's right. Okay. So in this uh, duration of one year or two years, over the two years or one year? So this will be completed within this financial year. You will complete this in this financial year. Okay. Uh, so how about uh, the Bangalore order? As I mentioned uh, a little while ago, we will start production in Q3 of the current financial year, and uh, that would take about uh, six quarters or seven quarters as per the schedule. Uh, okay. Uh, sir, what is the margins in only in the metro segment? Uh, only for the private metro segment. Sorry, I, I didn't get your. Uh, 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 what is the EBITDA margins in Pune metro segment? We would not be able to disclose contract by contract uh, margins uh, for competitive reasons, but uh, segment margins have already been disclosed in the results that have been published. Okay, so because in this uh, financial report which I have gone through, I am just saying that margin is 4.1 percentage. Is my reading right, or is there is any mistake on this? No, there is no mistake in the reading. Uh, the reading is correct. Then what I am talking. Yeah, as I explained a little while ago, that we have not been able to attain uh, till now the uh, the base level of capacity utilization. and therefore the fixed costs of the business get amortized over a smaller volume which results in uh, lesser margin uh, apart from that there are some learning curve costs that are incurred in a new business uh, but going forward we expect that uh, once things are more stable over the next maybe 4 uh, 3 4 uh, quarters 5 quarters at the most uh, we would be able to also uh target 8 to 10% which is the uh, uh, projected uh, forecasted ebitda margin in the prs also for it so in the last and final question what can be the capex for the next 3 4 years plan we had already uh, announced uh, uh, the the capex that we are uh, 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 we we are likely to incur uh, Uh, including the ones that we have uh, done in the last 2-3 uh, years is about a thousand crores. So what we have done in the last 2-3 years 
is around 253 hundred crores. The rest would be spent uh, over the next uh, four five years, uh, four years time, which would also include uh, our equity portion to the uh, wheel project. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, another question is on the wagons part and the freight wagons. Uh, sir, this year, how many wagons have you produced? Uh, if any uh, near number works out for me. In the investor presentation, is there? It's already disclosed in the investor presentation, the uh, dispatch uh, for the current is 5,298 wagons. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Have you got that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Abdul Kadir Raja from Ratnavali Investments. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. And thank you for giving me, giving me the opportunity. And congratulations on such a great set of numbers. So I just wanted to understand the uh, demand for the private uh, uh, sector uh, in the in the, in the for the wagons. Uh, and if you could just you know throw us a ballpark number like of uh, how much wagons were, like you would have delivered during the previous quarter. Uh, so we already mentioned that uh, the delivery on quarter by quarter basis is something that we are not uh, disclosing, but uh, approximately we have been able to achieve about uh, uh, 2,000 uh, run rate of 2,000 wagons, uh, close to 2,000 wagons per quarter. Uh, I didn't get your first question, the first part of your question, if you could repeat it. Yeah, so just wanted to understand like uh, uh, this, uh, um, the sales number which uh, uh, we have thrown, uh, the, the, the rail, uh, freight rail segment. So like uh, just wanted to understand like how has the private, uh, you know, demand, uh, you know, shaped up in the last quarter? The first demand is uh, shaped up uh, well in the last year, I would say. We are not uh, giving the breakup, but I did mention in the uh, during the call that uh, in terms of our company, we are uh, uh, a leading player, one of the leading players in the private rail uh, wagon business as well. Uh, we would have uh, one of the highest uh, order books and uh, in both the private sector and in the uh, uh, rail, uh, sorry, the uh, Indian railway business. Uh, so the, the private business, the private wagon business is also a very uh, buoyant business. But, you know, when we look at the wagon uh, business per se, we have to see the overall uh, demand because, you know, the, uh, the demand of the railways is, is there as a set number. And the uh, uh, purchasing is done either via the railway's own funds or under the PPP mode, which is done by the, uh, the railways. Uh, by the, sorry, the private sector. Uh, okay, got it, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Akash Bohra from Dalal and Racha Stock Broki. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the strong set of numbers. Uh, so my question is more from the uh, point of view of, uh, so regarding the CAPEX that we are going to do, uh, is it going to be uh, from our internal accruals or are we going to take more debt and what is the broader strategy on debt as to how are we uh, planning, to, how much debt are we planning to keep in our books, and how much are we planning to repay in the short and medium term? Sir, uh, our strategy as far as debt is concerned is uh, is quite evident from our actions over the last year. Uh, while on one side we have incurred uh, capex and enhanced capacities, if you compare on a standalone basis, which is excluding the earthwise subsidiary also, over the last five years we have reduced our debt quite significantly. Uh, so we, we are conservative, very conservative as far as our debt policies are concerned. On the funding of the CAPEX, uh, we are generating cash. We have a, a good cash flow. Having said that, we also have a large uh, uh, growth uh, trajectory. As, uh, uh, as you are aware and you can see from the numbers, 2018, which is five, six years ago, uh, we were at 300 crore top line and now 
uh, we are at a 970 or quarterly uh, line, so which on an annualized basis is uh, 10, 12 times of that. So obviously the cash requirement goes up. So as far as the funding of the CAPEX, judicious mix will be worked out. It is still work in progress. Uh, we will be using part of it through our internal accrual, uh, maybe part of it through debt, etc. So this is something which uh, we do not see or envisage this as a challenge. But we would be uh, working on this uh, and, and making sure that it is done in the best interest uh, and sustainability of the, of the growth uh, trajectory that we have embarked upon. So basically we are not trying to raise any proceeds from uh, equity, right? Which is equity. There is nothing that has been planned so far, but uh, you know, I would not uh, again uh, like to speculate on any uh, future uh, issues, but uh, no, we have not uh, yet planned any equity uh, raising uh, so far. Okay, sir. Okay, and and if you could give any guidance for uh, uh, guidance for FI24 and FI24 on the revenue and EBITDA levels, uh, we do not give uh, uh, guidance in terms of the business uh, for the future. But what what we have always maintained is that our business is uh, uh, top line leading the bottom line the kind of a business. Uh, in terms of the EBITDA, we continue to maintain. Uh, uh, that uh, we would uh, be able to do our business is a business which gives about eight to ten percent of a beta. Some quarters can be slightly better, some quarters can be slightly worse. Some contracts can be slightly better, some contracts can be slightly worse. But on a blended basis, when we uh, do our uh, bidding, when we do our strategies, we ensure that we are at about eight to ten percent uh, beta. Uh, we have already uh, disclosed to you the the, uh, the order book that we have and the ramp up that we have been able to achieve over the last six eight quarters, uh, where we have been very consistent in our uh, uh, in our uh, delivery vis-a-vis what, -vis what whatever we have uh, uh, kind of uh, promised. So we hope uh, and we are sure we'll be able to maintain that kind of uh, uh, kind of a performance. Okay, sir. And just last question from my side. So this was regarding the large orders that we have received. So uh, namely the package order from Indian Railways, the Bande Bharat order, the Metro order. So these three, uh, what is the broad uh, uh, execution timeline and what is the uh, broad uh, revenue booking, like when it will start reflecting in our books? Uh, so what is the broad timeline for these two things, for these orders? So the uh, timelines of different orders are different. Uh, there's not a standard execution timeline. The wagon order is already under production and revenue has been booked over the last 11-12 uh, uh, months, I would say. Uh, for the Vande Bharat, uh, the first train will be supplied in two years from now. And thereafter, the train supply would happen in about four, four and a half years. Uh, the revenue recognition would start when we start building the train in the POCM method. Uh, and uh, Metro, as I mentioned a little while ago, the Pune Metro, we have already executed 50%. The balance will be executed during this uh, financial year. Sure, so for Monday Bharat, when we are recording on a POCM basis, uh, so okay, like, uh, will the revenue booking start from uh, FI24 FI and FI25 itself? Because uh, we'll be, we, have, we would have already started building the train, right? So I will not be able to comment upon that. That is an accounting treatment which has to be dependent on the physical progress of the work. So as it is the percentage of completion, so as the project gets starts getting completed, the revenue recognition would happen accordingly. Uh, but of course, if we have to deliver, which we will deliver the train in 24 months, the production activities will have to be started much before. And the baggage will complete by? The wagons order, 24,000 order, uh, will be completed in that time? This is scheduled to be completed by uh, August 25. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Akshay Kotari from Envision. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, am I audible? Yes, absolutely, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just one clarification, uh, the 9,600 and the remaining maintenance, so the 
वर्क शेयर इज इक्वल फॉर बोथ भेल एंड अस I've already clarified a little while ago that about 51, 52% for us and the balance for the HCL. Yeah, but also on the maintenance front. Yeah, I said yes. It's both supply and maintenance. Both are uh, approximately the same percentage. Okay. Now, sir, on the Vande Bharat claims, uh, uh, is there any stipulation of a uh, certain level of indigenization which needs to be there, uh, which is there embedded in the contract? I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. So, uh, just uh, you did mention that trail wheel sets would also be a supplement to the 35 years of maintenance which we would do for one day Bharat. I'm just asking uh, whether there would be any stipulation of uh, you know Atmanirbharta or indigenization content which is there in existing one day Bharat contract. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All these contracts are under the Make in India clause and Atmanirbhar Bharat clause. Yeah, so uh, so there is a stipulation of around 80% local procurement or something like that, right? Different different tenders have different stipulation of local content, so I will not be able to comment on individual contracts. But yes, they do have uh, the appropriate local content which is stipulated by law. Okay. So lastly, uh, uh, what risks do you perceive uh, uh, in uh, these contracts? Because uh, I have lately seen some some of the companies, you know, when whenever there is this uh, jointly and severally liable clauses because the other party does not perform and the, and the whole project goes for us. So, what are the risks which you perceive in these contracts when we are working with the counterparty? There are risks in every contract, in every uh, sphere of business. Uh, what uh, uh, we absolutely do and the risks exist for both sides, you know, I mean, there is a perceived risk and there is an actual risk. Uh, so both parties uh, work together to mitigate those risks and that is exactly what we are doing also in uh, both the cases, in our, uh, both the partnerships that we have been in. We don't see uh, a, a huge risk uh, as such which is unmanageable because uh, both the cases we have very strong partners and both the partners bring in uh, immense value on the table uh, in terms of their uh, know-how, expertise and management bandwidth. So we really do not see this uh, as a risk, but we see this as an opportunity. That's great, sir. So lastly, do we have capability with the uh, aluminum coaches as well? Pura Metro, we are the first aluminum coach manufacturer in the country. Pura Metro side as well? If we can make one, we can make any one, but uh, Vande Bharat's uh, current project is on stainlessity. Yeah, understood. But the, uh, uh, I think there is there are uh, there are talks of uh, our getting into aluminum coaches for Vande Bharat as well. We will uh, cross the bridge when we come to it. Uh, whenever there is an opportunity, we will definitely uh, evaluate the opportunity on its merits. Thanks a lot and all the best, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question comes from Sonia Varnikar from Dalal and Rocha. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. I have two questions on Vande Bharat. Um, earlier, we had mentioned that margins for Vande Bharat order would be higher in maintenance versus manufacturing. So, uh, in initial years when majority business would come from manufacturing part of the Vande Bharat, uh, it will impact blended margins, right? No, it will not impact blended margins, man, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, as a uh, when our business a sustainable level of EBITDA margins, eight to ten percent, and that is what we are expecting to receive from the supply of Vande Bharat as well. Okay, okay. And so regarding propulsion system, uh, it will be sourced from whom for Vande Bharat? Our partner BHEL is uh, responsible for the propulsion uh, supply. Okay, so sir, in terms of uh, quality or technology, uh, how uh, is it placed uh, against the competitors? The very fact that uh, the railways have technically evaluated, qualified, and awarded the contract to us is uh, testimony enough that uh, the partners, both us and BHEL, are fully competent 
to produce a quality trade as per the required uh, both the scale and art have qualities of our credentials which is past performances so uh, in, uh, in a nutshell both of us have already kind of uh, been in the respective businesses that we are in and have been able to supply the right quality product in the right manner. That's what has led us to be able to be the successful bidder for this sector. Okay. Uh, so, uh, last question if I can ask. Um, uh, recently, there was an announcement that uh, railways would be procuring uh, 238 on the rates for um, uh, replacing Mumbai local, uh, Vande Bharat Metro Rex. So, uh, will Tita the uh, bid for this order? We've also read the announcement, Matt. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we uh, evaluate each opportunity on its own merit. We are a, a significant and leading player in the business, both in the Vande Bharat now and in the Metro segment. So definitely, when there is an opportunity, uh, we definitely would uh, evaluate that. Uh, to uh, give a definitive answer of a yes or a no at this point of time would be premature because we've also uh, read this from media reports. The tender is not being floated as yet. Okay. And so in terms of capacity uh, for passenger coaches, like if such orders uh, come, then how uh, well we are pleased to increase capacity? I already mentioned we are increasing capacity uh, significantly and our targeted capacity is to get to about 70 coaches per month in the next say, three years or so. Okay, thank you sir, that's it from my side. Thank you. That will be the last question for the day. Now, I hand over the floor to the management team for the closing comments. Uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, thank you uh, to all of you for the very insightful questions uh, and suggestions. Uh, we have taken note, uh, my team here has taken note of uh, each one of them. Uh, uh, thank you for the support and the confidence that has been uh, bestowed upon us uh, uh, in the past and we do look forward to be able to live up to those expectations in uh, times to come. As I mentioned that, uh, you know, India is going through a transformative journey under the current uh, uh, regime in terms of the railways, the Atmanirbhar Bharat, Abhyan, the infrastructure spend, the Make in India program. And I have always believed that the Make in India program and the Atmanirbhar Bharat is probably the most significant uh, development in the in, in independent India in terms of supporting and encouraging local industry. So uh, we have just been able to ensure that we are able to ride this wave uh, and uh, be a part of this uh, journey that the, the government, the Honorable Prime Minister, has been able to uh, kind of define for the country. So we believe that this. Uh, uh, growth in the railway space, in the infrastructure space is here to stay and uh, it shall be continuously our endeavor to be able to upgrade ourselves on an ongoing basis to be a significant uh, contributor to this uh, process of, uh, I would say, reconstructing Indian infrastructure. So thank you very much and uh, wish you all a very, uh, very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dursabha's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you and have a pleasant day.